Hi guys, it's James here from Optics Warehouse, your night vision and hunting specialist. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through the pros and cons of whether or not you should purchase a night vision weapon scope or a thermal weapon scope for your nighttime vermin control. So all I'm gonna do is just cover the basis of both. I won't go into too much of a product review on these two specifics that I have here today. However, what I will do is cover more of like a general feel so you guys get an idea of what it is that you maybe want and maybe don't want. So before actually going through the units themselves, the first thing I will focus on is of course the price. Thermal is more inherently expensive um, and I know it sounds cliche but the more you invest in thermal the better image you get out of it. So here I have the Hick Micro Stella SQ50, probably the best thermal weapon scope uh, on the market at the moment, especially with all its sort of technologies, affordability, all that sort of stuff. It is really the all singing, all dancing package. The only thing it doesn't have unfortunately is a laser rangefinder. However, as a thermal weapon scope, you're not really gonna get much better than this on the market at the moment. Coming in at three grand, that is of course a lot of money. Um, now you have to seriously think, um, am I going out shooting enough? Am I foxing enough? Can I justify? Are you getting paid for your contracting perhaps? Do you know, is this gonna make itself the money back over a period of months, years, etc.? What the majority of people tend to do though is go for the night vision option. Now the Alpex here is without a doubt the industry leading um, day night scope currently on the market. Um, as far as I'm aware nothing really comes close to it. Um, so I would say the Alpex is probably going to be the best option available and this comes in at £800. So already you've got a £2,200 price difference between the two. So it's a massive, massive difference. And of course that's just because it's basically like a camera recorder. You're just using a digital colour image and a digital nighttime image. So there's not too much technology going on there. However, because it is a digital day nighttime image, that does mean you get a clearer picture and more realistic view of what it is you're looking at and what you would see with the naked eye. So what does that mean? That means you're going to get a much better identification of your quarry. So if you're shooting a fox, let's say at 250 yards, um, you'll be able to see it crystal clear through the night vision scope, there's no doubt about it at all. And with a high end thermal scope, you'd definitely be able to identify it, but you'd be more reassured with a night vision scope. I would certainly say that having used both out in the field, I mean, don't get me wrong, the Stellar SQ50 is a fantastic piece of kit and I quite confidently identify a fox at sort of 300, 350 yards, 400 plus, all those sort of distances really, especially with that 640 sub 35 millikelvin sensor inside there. Um, so ID wise, again, I'll probably say night vision slightly wins, of course, again, on the price point as well. Now then, usability. Now, because the night vision, all night vision devices need some form of artificial light to illuminate, hence it's called an illuminator, um, with your device that of course can cause tricky issues sometimes. So let's say you've got this mounted on your rifle, you've got your illuminator there on the side. Let's say you're shooting a your fox, your fox is moving away. Okay, I need to adjust the beam, adjust the brightness, move around, okay, adjust the focus of that. There's a lot of tinkering about that can happen. Of course, if your fox is sitting there, you take your time with it, not a problem at all. Um, but I say it's a lot, you have to have to rely on an external source to produce that sort of invisible infrared light that allows you to see the target so clearly, especially on something like the Alpex, which can see out for quite some distance. With thermal, it is very simply pick up, find the heat source and shoot, away you go. Because your eye is naturally drawn to the heat source on the on a spotter, it'd be exactly the same with a thermal weapon scope. I've certainly found when going shooting out with buddies that um, if I have a thermal weapon scope, they have a night vision weapon scope, I can pick up the target straight away like that. They usually tend to take about sort of like 10, 15 seconds to find the target, um, purely because you have to have that light, you're looking out for a pair of eyes, you're looking for a silhouette in the dark. So of course it can cause a bit of issues. Okay, so we've covered three points so far. We've covered the cost, the usability, and the identification um, optimization when it comes to the actual scopes itself. So far, it is 2 1 to night vision. The fourth one I'm going to go for is where does this look like it's going in the future? With a company like Hick, who I'd obviously say are probably the leading brand in the market at the moment, their technology is getting better and more affordable. Because they have the ability as such a big company to develop such high-end technology at a short in a short time period for a minimal cost because it's all in-house, 
then Hick are going to be bringing out stuff that is going to then change the thermal market. Thermal is getting better and better, I'd say, at least every sort of three to six months. I mean, the past three or four years, it's grown at an exponential rate. So there is no doubt uh, in my imagination that probably in the next two, three years, the stuff that's coming out thermal wise will be ridiculous. And of course, it will also be at a much more affordable price. Night vision, again, Hick, the industry leaders at the moment, um, what they have shown is that there's, there's the potential there to work without any artificial light. If you use an Alpex in moonlight in black and white mode, you don't necessarily need an illuminator. Of course, different uh, situations, whether all that sort of stuff can play on that as well, do bear that in mind. However, I have seen some foxing footage from some of the customers, and I've used it myself, that you can actually shoot a fox in the moonlight, in the dark, on black and white mode, no IR at all. So getting more towards that point of using color with no IR in the pitch black, that is really where it's going. It's a more of a slow growth, and that's sort of really where I can see it's gonna peak off. Where with thermal, you're gonna get better and better and better with the identification. I can certainly see that coming along as well. So there's more room for advancement with thermal than I'd say there is with night vision. Night vision is sort of coming towards its peak at the moment. Um, however, I would say with thermal, you are gonna get more and more advances. So you're looking at a sort of like evenly matched there between the two. What I will say, and I always say this to customers as well, especially, if you've not used thermal before, do not go straight away for a thermal weapon scope. It is very tricky from the first time you're using thermal, I tip myself a good few years of obviously going out countless nights, make sure I get it right, bam, 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 of making sure you are absolutely confident with your species identification. The last thing you want to do is make an error, shoot something you're not supposed to, because as soon as you pull that trigger and the round goes out the barrel, that's it. There is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Um, so it is absolutely paramount that you yourself are very confident with thermal, especially if you're going to go for a mid-range thermal, which might not necessarily have the correct, well, not so, which might not necessarily have the better identification that some of the sort of top end stuff may do. However, you are you are confident that you know what it is you're going to be shooting at. One example uh, I will use is that obviously when I first got a spotter, it was about sort of 10 years or so ago, so the technology was relatively old then. The amount of rabbits that I thought were foxes, I just, yeah, I couldn't tell you because it's just, because it's that small heat source, you get excited when you see a heat source or think, oh yeah, there it is, bang on. You come to your night vision scope, oh, bugger, it's another rabbit. So as obviously, just make sure you are confident with thermal beforehand. If you haven't used thermal, I would highly recommend going for night vision because then it allows you to gauge how far away the actual target is as well, get that correct identification, and it doesn't break the bank as well. So you got all that combination, allowing you to make sure you have an efficient and effective tool and that you don't make a mistake and you gain more experience while using the pieces of equipment as well. So that's just sort of like a brief overview between the two, which might be better. What I am planning on doing, this will be sort of the first in the series, I'll get these two out in the field. Uh, we'll have a look at them both and we'll see how they do for identification at night time, just so you guys can get an idea thinking, right, okay, oh, I know a fox at 200 yards, that's what it'll look like with the Alpex, the, the current best day night scope on the market, and that's what it'll look like with the Stellar SQ50, the best thermal rifle scope on the market at the moment. So you guys will get an idea to say, right, okay, now I know what I need to go for. As always, guys, if you've got any questions, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. More than happy to help. If you want, drop us a phone call or drop us an email. Again, always happy to help with whatever your query may be. I hope you found the video informative. I've been James, your night vision hunting specialist, and this has been another video from Optics Warehouse.